Welcome to Minerva, the all-in-one library management system. Today, my teammate, Haywood Johnson, and myself, Andrew Naylor, will be demonstrating how to use this software, and we'll describe a few of its features. We start here with the login screen. Here, a user will enter their credentials, and the program will check those against our database. Based on this information, it will deduce your access level and direct you from there. Next, we have the sign-up screen. Here, a user can enter their information, decide on a username and password, and if they have a code from their administrator, they can enter it here to assign their account a higher access level. Once the user presses Sign Up, this information is saved to our database, effectively creating a new account that the user can log in with. A user with the user access level, the lowest access level being that's in, that it's intended for patrons, will be greeted with this screen once they've logged in. You'll notice that access here is limited for reasons that will become apparent as we proceed with the demonstration. The user can click the Patron Transactions button to view their transactions history with this library. This window allows them to see all relevant information of this transaction, including who issued the book and how many were issued. Being a library, an employee is required to perform transactions, so we won't be adding to this list until later in the presentation. Now we move on to the next access level, Employee. Here, the user is presented with more options. Let's start with Check Stock. Here, the employee can search for and review each book in the library's collection. Once they've found the book they're looking for, they can add it to the cart in order to facilitate a transaction for a patron. Another option for the employee is the ability to check transactions. This window may look similar to the one we saw previously as a patron, but you'll notice there's more transactions here. That's because as an employee we can view each transaction made in the library's history. Again, the user can search for transactions and print a receipt. You'll notice, however, this button, Remove Transaction, is in red. Pressing this button will remove the record of a transaction from the database. As such, its use is restricted to admin level users. All right, so last but not least, I'm gonna get logged in here. Very, very secret login. Hey, we're in, baby. Let's check our stock. Uh, search for a book, let's call it Harry Potter. Because I've been using Harry Potter to test everything. You get your low results here. Some of them were bad in the library because they have, um, the data was not complete all around. And not all the images will load. Well, they load, but they're not because there's a catch all that should say no image available. So it's saying the image is loaded, but the catch-all is not catching it because it thinks that there's an image there. Totally fixable. But say you come here. I don't want to find one with an image. There we go. This one has an image. Add to cart. Looks successfully added to cart. Go to cart. I gotta fix that back. Um, as you can see, it's added here. I'm gonna get an error whenever I double click the user. It should be when you double click the user, it adds the user ID and username. Uh, it's not properly formatted. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but um, form cart. Yeah, this is not properly formatted right here. Easy fix. I'm going to fix it in like a few seconds. But when you check out, check out is complete. Items are removed. Um, it'll store them to the database, but that's basically it. Now we move on to the next access level, Employee. Here, the user is presented with more options. Let's start with Check Stock. Now we move on to the next access level, Employee. Here, the user is presented with more options. Let's start with Check Stock. Next, we have the Sign Up screen. Here, a user can enter their information, decide on a username and password, and if they have a code from their administrator, 
they can enter it here to assign their account a higher access level. Once the user presses sign up, this information is saved to our database, effectively creating a new account that the user can log in with.